Hey, physics class. Let's do some actual problems looking at circular motion. So I have two worksheets uh, that have answer keys on the actual file folder for circular motion. I'm going to go over the one that says circular motion practice sheet, just the number one first. We're going to go through questions one, two, and three. These are, by and large means, pretty simple kind of circular motion questions. But let's just break it down and kind of understand what's happening here um, as we kind of get into this new topic here. So I'm going to go and get this out. Okay, all right, we got it there. So it says a 61 kilogram skater. Okay, mass equals 61 kilograms. Cuts a circle of a radius of four meters in the X. So basically this person is going around in a circle. They're skating on ice and there is a radius of four meters, okay? Her speed, velocity is four meters per second, okay? What is the centripetal force? What exerts this force, okay? So basically we want to know the centripetal force. What is, centripetal force is like, again, something has to be creating a force inward. So if this person is moving this way, okay? Something has to be going inwards to keep them on this actual circular path. Because otherwise, they would continue on going very straight. So there just needs to be this force pushing inwards, okay? And so let's get that. How do we get force? Well, we have to kind of get our so we have velocity of four, and we have a radius of four. We're gonna define this formula, or use this formula in the end. Force, angular force, equals mass times acceleration, and that's, again, circular acceleration. We have our mass, we don't have an acceleration yet, so let's get an acceleration. We're gonna use our easy acceleration formula for this one, which is just acceleration equals v squared over r, and not too bad. All right, so four and four, I believe we get here, so this is gonna be four squared over four, which is 16 over four, which ends up being four. A lot of fours. Okay, so my angular acceleration is four. Even though this skater has the exact same speed all the way around, okay? They have an acceleration of four meters a second inwards, inwards to keep themselves on this circular path. That's what that means, okay? I know that even though they have the same velocity, you think that they have to have the exact same acceleration or zero acceleration, but because they're consistently changing directions, we have to have an acceleration towards the middle that's gonna keep them on this path. Otherwise, they just keep going straight in whatever direction they're going. So that is my acceleration. My acceleration, four meters per second. Okay, no direction, like technically you'd have to keep giving a direction. For the most part, we won't be giving a direction. Our direction is just in towards the middle. That is basically the direction we're gonna say. It's always in towards the middle of the circle. Squared here, all right. Now, this part becomes a little easier. Okay, force equals mass of 61 times four, which gives me a force inward of 200, is it 244, 200, 44 newtons. So that is the amount of force that is consistently being pushed on this inward to keep this actually in circular motion. All right, cool. Let's go to question two. Question two. All right, can I go one more? Nope, all right, we did. It says, a body of mass, five kilograms. Five kilograms, lying on a smooth horizontal surface is whirled around at a constant speed. So basically we're gonna say that no friction kind of ish right now, okay? Uh, constant speed of two meters per second. Velocity equals two meters per second. At the end of a string, a length of 35 centimeters or 0 0.35 meters. So I'm gonna use distance, 0 0.35. Okay, what is the centripetal acceleration? So I need to find acceleration. Again, I'm gonna go acceleration equals V squared over R. So I have two squared over 0 0.35. Four over 0 0.35 gives me an acceleration, 11.4 meters per second squared. For B, what is the tension? Okay, so again, tension, and we're gonna get into this tension 
can kind of be different when it's horizontal, side to side, and when it's going up and down, because gravity is going to affect it if something's going up and down vertically. Okay, there's going to be more tension on the bottom, like when you go with the bottom, because gravity is pushing down as well as somebody, so there's more tension at the bottom of the string. If it's going upwards, there's less tension, um, but we'll get into that into another question. For now, the nice thing is, horizontally, which means side to side, there's no extra tension on the string, only what the circular path is doing. So, again, how do we find tension? Tension is just the mass times acceleration. Gravity will have a lot to do with that eventually. Right now, because it's going horizontally, it doesn't matter. So, I have a mass of 5 times 11.4. So, I have a tension of 57. Something like that, 57.28, 57.2 newtons. So there's B. And then C, what is the period of the motion? What is the period? So I need to actually find the period. Like how long does it take to actually go around the circle once? Okay? And so we can kind of look over here. I'm going to go all the way back to my simple velocity formula. Velocity equals 2 pi r over period. And so I'm trying to figure out how long does it take to go around the circle once. And so I can use 2 and pi. I have my radius. I know my velocity because they gave it to me. So let's just figure out how long it takes to go around this thing once. So that's going to be 2 pi radius of 0 0.35 over, well, and then I'm going to do this, right? And it equal 2. We have a velocity of 2. So the period stays here. And so when I flip these, when I flip those, because again, I have one variable bottom, we can flip those. Period equals 2 pi r over 2. Okay, you can kind of cancel those out, or just actually figure that whole thing out and divide it by 2. Either one is fine. You should get an answer, though, of 1.1. 1 .1. Okay, period of 1.1 1 .1 seconds. That's how long it took to go around the circle once. 1.1 1 .1 seconds. All right, here's question two. Let's go to question three. Question three, last one for this video. All right, hey buddy, it's world in a horizontal circle. So it's again, just this way, no vertical gravity yet. Horizontal circle at the end of string length of 40 centimeters. So our radius equals 0 0.4 meters. Okay. Um, so basically, it, it says the other end is just tied to a peg. That means it's, it's just one thing is steady in the middle. It's going around in a circle. Okay. The body has a mass of 0 0.5, and this is important. It makes three revolutions per second. It makes three revolutions per second. That's not the period. Okay. This is not period. That is usually a frequency. Okay? Frequency gives you hertz or revolutions per second. We do not want that. We want period. Okay? So how are we gonna do that? Well, again, we have our formula for period. Period is time over the number of times something happens. What's my time? That's revolutions per second. So that means I have one second and three revolutions, which means my period. 0.33 seconds. Okay, it takes 0.33 seconds to go around this circle once. So that's going to be very important kind of going forward. It says, what is the acceleration of this body? What is the acceleration? I have no velocity here. It gives me no velocity whatsoever. So I have to figure out the velocity using that formula. Velocity equals 2 pi r over my period. Now that I figure out my period, I know how long it takes to go around once. This question becomes okay. So A, velocity equals 2 pi, what's my radius? 0 0.4 and then 0 0.33. My velocity is going to be large. It's going to be very big. It's going to be 144 meters per second. All right, 144 meters per second, which is okay. All right, 
That's wrong. One sec. Whoa, I'm ahead of myself. Sorry. Velocity. 7.6. That's way better. 7.6 meters per second squared. Okay, that's way better. Now, let's get into the second part. What is the tension of the string? Sorry, okay, that's, so that's the velocity. I have velocity. How do I get my acceleration now? Acceleration equals V squared over R. Here's where the number gets big. When I put 7.6 squared and then divide it by this 0 0.33 or divide by 0 0.4, that's when I get an acceleration of 144 meters per second squared, okay? That is a very large acceleration, but it just means that's how fast it has to keep moving in this very small circle to actually stay in an actual circle. So that's, that's what's going to be big. That's one thing you're going to notice about circular motion. The accelerations can get very, very large compared to velocities. And that's just because, again, the shorter radius, the faster it has to, again, consistently change velocity or change direction. And so this can be a little seem like you're wrong. You're not in most instances. Okay, the acceleration can be quite big compared to velocity. Okay, so there's part A. B. How do I find this? What is the tension? Again, because it's just horizontal, nice thing. It's just going to be mass times acceleration. I have acceleration there. Just times by the mass, which is 0.5, and I get force of 72 newtons. Okay. It says, what is the magnitude and direction of the force which the string exerts on the peg? So basically, um, what is the string doing? If I have a string, again, on a peg and it just keeps moving around in a circle, that string has tension. It's pulling, it has a force of 72 newtons and it's pulling it back inwards, okay? The string is doing 72 newtons of like force to keep this thing from actually flying away, okay? And if there's more force, the string would break and the thing would actually go flying. But, the string is doing 72 newtons of force in the direction like towards the middle. So back towards the middle of the actual circle. All right. Hopefully those three make sense. Um, just understanding kind of the circular motion that we have. There'll be two more videos kind of getting a little more um, just, just next steps to our topic. All right, class. Thanks so much.